We'll be in Galatians 5 today, uh, starting in verse 26, picking up where Mike left off, kind of bridging uh, between his message and mine. This section has been kind of hard to divide up and knowing where one section starts and one ends. So hopefully that'll be clear this morning, but let's go and ask the Lord's help uh, before we look at his word this morning. Galatians 5, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do pray that you would come. Lord, we do confess, I confess, that at times we do focus so much on the things of the earth that we don't focus on you as, as we should. And not only you, but even the things that come that you have for us. For Lord, you have things for, for us in the future. But most importantly, you. We get you one day to be face to face with you to be in glory with you, to see your, your glory fully unveiled, and one day to be in a world where everything is as it should be once again, that you, Lord, in, in that way, will, the sin will be eradicated. For, Lord, we know you rule and reign now, that you have declared the end from the beginning, and all that takes place now, Lord, is part of your eternal decree. You are sovereign over all, but yet we look forward to that day when sin is vanquished in ourselves and in this world. So, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would come. And Lord, now as we look to your word, the the word you have for us, for the church that does live in a world that is perverse and wicked and sinful, and we ourselves still having the flesh we wrestle with. Lord, I pray now your spirit would be our teacher and guide and direct us to help us and to see the truths here that we need to apply and and obey. And, And Lord, that I would just merely be the speaker and that the words would be from ultimately from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in Philippians chapter 2, that passage that Pastor...